Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Ancient Legends Challenge. In the last episode, we bred an army that could take on the Killer Mountains. Now we're just waiting for some of our final creatures to make their way over to the ports, and for May to have her last baby too. Or at least the last baby that we're going to have on the crossing island. I suppose she still has plenty of time left on her lifespan to have more babies, more of Melody's little flames, as soon as they leave for their new home. She and Proxy have quite a bit of a handful. They have so many babies to wrangle, and something tells me all of their boys are going to be very, very rowdy. But with those big horns of theirs, the claws that they have, they are probably rearing for adventure. And I'm sure that our timid little mouse is feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now, too. But she has weaseled her way straight into Grimsley's heart. It's kind of a shocking turn of events. He is our most hot-headed creature, after all. So we figured that he would probably look down on somebody as quiet and shy as Rakois. But instead, he has found potential in her scorpion tail. And he's also promised to show her how to defend herself. So she's feeling a little bit more brave about the whole situation, and she's willing to join our tribe as they make their way to the Killer Mountain biome. Now, with her two deformed paws, she's going to need all the help that she can get, because she won't be able to pick up any sources of food. So that's where the rest of our tribe will come in, with all of their digging chunks and their digging paws. I suppose we could have Pixel make a little bit of a detour, since we do have roots up this way. And he can even help lead his mother over to that permanent nest. We'll have him scoot on into the tall grass right here, and that should make it a little bit easier for her to wind her way around. Actually, if we could find some more berry bushes, if there are any more around here. Ooh, why is there bunny meat out there? I don't think any of our creatures hunted down a bunny, did they? Ooh, that is very mysterious. Did somebody else hunt that? Or was that perhaps Rakois? Her scorpion tail doesn't give her any attack strength, but the big body does. So maybe she will be something of a bunny hunter after all. That's why Grimsley knows that she has quite a bit of potential. She just doesn't realize it. She's been too afraid to show her true colors. So he's going to help her out. And since you're just waiting down here, Kaneki... Why don't you actually take a look inside this grass patch? Just to see if there's truly nothing here. Okay. Well, go ahead and try to crack open some of those coconuts for us. So maybe you can pick one up before we end up leaving the island. Let's go ahead and skip the day, though. And just keep an eye on the shore. Because that still has me a little bit concerned. That there might be something else lurking out there. Our top priority is going to be just getting May to her nest right now. So maybe if we start scooting some of our creatures out of the way, she'll be able to access it a little bit more easily. She can wind her way around the rock now, set up right inside this nest, and then sniff around with her digging trunk. Okay, it looks like the meat may have disappeared, which is just as worrying. But we're going to move our little mouse out of the way so she doesn't get hit by the acorns either. Ooh, she's actually chased a little bunny straight into Kaneki's claws. This may actually be a good way for her to experience hunting for the first time. Maybe we could have Kaneki leave this bunny for her. It would be an easy meal, but I think Grimsley is going to let him know that he has different plans for this bunny. He's called dibs on it just for Rakois. But I believe there was one more of those berry bushes out here. So maybe we could bring one of your stronger sons, like Copper, over to see if he can cut it down too. We'll scoot him right into the tall grass as well, far away from the coconut trees. That's the one thing that May is going to request, now that she knows just how much energy it can take out of a creature when the coconuts knock you right on the head. Once you've been hit, there is literally no escape. Even your mother can't drag you out of the way. That's probably why Sakechi is staying out of the way too. Despite the fact that he is also quite bold in nature, just like his little nephew Grimsley, he has kind of softened in his ways, 
And I think that's because he knows how important it is to keep the children in line. He has seen firsthand how Grimsley's aggression has hindered the tribe's progression. Now I wonder if that's something that little Nevi might appreciate too? She strikes me as somebody who's probably a little bit more quiet than her rowdy brothers. She doesn't have the claw, just the digging paw and the velvet paw too, so she is quite sneaky. Maybe she would enjoy getting to know Sakechi a little bit better, and she can help him clear out the grass around here, so our tribe should be able to make their way to the ports quite easily. The only thing that's really left is just waiting for the newest little baby to grow. So go ahead and scoop up some of those extra little roots. It looks like we're all out of them now, so maybe you should wind your way around the shore instead. Yeah, it doesn't look like anybody is out here anymore. So whatever hunted down that bunny is definitely gone. At least we know that it wasn't a Baryena then, because a Baryena would have certainly still been alive. But now should be your chance, as May has her last baby of the island. Grimsley can send our little mouse out to do her first hunting. You know, she was actually too young to do any hunting way back when we found her anyways. She only had one gem, so she probably knows nothing about bunny hunting. She didn't have anybody to teach her. So Grimsley, why don't you teach her how to sneak around these ports? Sneak up from behind and grab that bunny for us? On with her scorpion tail, she can even poison her enemies too. That's one of the best parts about having her on our side. So Grimsley has now seen the scorpion tail in action for himself. And I think it's quite clear that he is very, very smitten with our little mouse. Hopefully they can start a family as soon as we move islands. But we have yet another rowdy little boy to take to the mountains too. And it looks like he is carrying that Baryena snout in his genetics as well. So there is still a chance that Melody's flames could start mutating that gene onto their families. But the next name on my list is Fang. So welcome to our tribe. Hope you're ready for an adventure because you're going to be one of the youngest to ever migrate. It won't be easy, but all of these babies know the purpose of their mission. They know to seek out those glaciers first. Oh, Fang is actually one of the hardiest of his family, too, so he might be able to do a little bit of traveling on his own. He won't have to worry about staying right next to his family, at least, like some of our creatures with the spiky body. The hope is that our spiky-bodied creatures can eventually mutate the heat body instead, as soon as we unlock that in our mutation menu. But let's have Nevi come over here. That way she can dig up this root for Sakechi and offer up some of those tasty morsels as a nice little snack. I bet he would appreciate that. Quite a few more of the berry bushes have grown back though, so let's make sure that Copper is chopping these down too. I like to imagine that he probably saw Grimsley doing as much when he was very, very young, so that's why he's so interested in continuing the tradition. It's going to help us build nests though, and that's the biggest concern, because it can be tricky to build a nursery in the mountains. But I think we should be just about ready to leave this land for the bunnies. We'll have proxies scoot on up here to pick up some of the very last of Melody's coconuts. And then as soon as their last baby grows, his next gem, I think you should be able to settle down on one of these skeletons too. Well, he is going to look like a very, very fierce little baby stumbling into the mountains, clutching the skulls of the tribes that came before them. At least they can be sure that nobody is going to mess with Fang. He will be feared across the ages. Now, while Kaneki still tries to work at that coconut, maybe we'll have Grimsley call little Rekoise back to the ports so they can settle down side by side. I guess our Saber Fangs found a spot of love on the crossing island after all. We might as well breed these two pairs now, in fact, just in case anything goes terribly, terribly wrong once we do leave on these ports. The Saber Fangs are nearing the ends of their lifespans, so we need to make sure that we're preserving those brilliant snouts. I guess for Sakechi's mutation menu, 
we'll want to make sure that we're stuffing it with those big megaloceros horns. Those will ensure that his babies will be nice and strong. Is his fertility okay? Yeah, that could probably use a little bit of a boost. Though thankfully his partner Nevi has perfect fertility. So we won't have to worry about hers at least. It'll actually be quite interesting to see which snout ends up being the most dominant. I suppose we don't even really have to place anything in her mutation menu at all. Though I will put just one slot of the saber-toothed fangs, since we want to see that survive somewhere in our lines. We have so many digging trunks all across the island, I'm not too concerned about these dying out, but the saber fangs are another story. And aside from that, I guess we could always try to breed some sort of pattern onto our babies. All of our babies have the no pattern right now, so let's see if we can bring back the mask. We haven't seen that in quite some time. Now as for you guys over here, there are quite a few things that we have to be concerned about with our timid little mouse, which is the only problem with breeding her. And not only that, but both of you have very, very low fertility. So first things first, we have to watch out for the deformed paws. We'll go ahead and place the runner's leg in, I guess. That way they'll be speedy. Grimsley, we know, is going to give us babies the Baryena Claw for sure, and those don't do much for speed. So the runner's leg should at least help to balance it out. And then we'll go ahead and place the saber fangs in there too, otherwise there's no chance that we're going to see it on his babies. And you little Grimsley, we'll try our best to breed those Megaloceros horns into your baby's traits, and then the high fertility too. So at least this provides us with a little bit of a failsafe. That way we'll know that each of our saber fangs will have at least one baby, no matter what happens when we get to our next island. Now Pixel, I believe, should be all out of roots that he can access from this area. So it's time for you to scoot on over to the ports as well. We'll have him settle somewhere in the middle, not right at the front of the pack, because I don't think he'd be too interested in leading them to their next island. I think that task is going to fall to one of his stronger brothers instead. Oh. Oh, he can crack open the coconuts because of his hammer tail. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's one of the updates that they made to the genes in this game. So now the hammer tail has the cracking ability. So that means not only can they crack open Melody's coconuts too, but they can also look for shells if we do have a lot of water to explore on the next island. Well, that's awfully lucky. I'm glad some of their babies inherited it. It's one of the genes that isn't really too present on our babies right now, but we might want to change that for the future if the shells are a good source for our food. Let's have you pick up that last coconut, and then I think we should be ready to skip our very final day on this island. Little Fang is going to grow his second gem as all of the moles come springing out of the ground. Well, fortunately for you, little guy, we are leaving. So we can have May sit right in the front. We could probably have Fang swipe down that one last berry bush too and then settle down between both of his parents. Oh no, and which one of you picked up the leech? Can I see it on any of you? Oh, our poor little timid mouse. I'm sure Grimsley wouldn't mind taking that right off of you. We still need to make sure that you guys are going to have a baby too after all. And Kaneki, here's your last chance to crack open that coconut. Nope, it wasn't meant to be. Well, who needs silly coconuts anyways? You have much bigger and better things waiting in your future. We might as well have May do the honors herself. She can travel with our tribe to our brand new mountain. Hopefully at least. Hopefully they're not tricking us again. And hopefully this is going to lead to the killer mountains. With plenty of those glaciers for our tribe to crack open to. This generation hasn't even witnessed the glaciers themselves. But it looks like we are definitely on a mountain. We have a glacier right off to the right of our ports. We have a glacier back here as well. And then last but not least, a glacier way over on the other side. 
Now as far as the other parts we can take, just in case these glaciers don't have the genes we're looking for, it looks like we can go back to a killer grassland, or we can perhaps move on to a lesser grassland of some sort. I'm not sure what this would be, but it should be on the hard mode levels, since the left islands typically take it down a notch. But all things considered, this island actually looks relatively peaceful. There's not much for us to do in terms of food, and that's basically what I figured. We can go fishing, we can pick up the leeches, and I'm sure we can probably hunt down some bunnies too. There are some burrows scattered around here, with plenty of patches of clovers for them to eat. So we'll have to keep that in mind for the future. It would be a good idea for some of our hunters and warriors to set up by the clovers too. Oh, and it looks like our little mouse may have gotten separated from Grimsley. We'll have to find you guys a good place to set up your nest. You can scoot up here to the stump as Proxy swipes at the leeches in the water. Oh, they aren't fading. We have fish on this side and the leeches absolutely everywhere over here. I wonder if that means that this pathway to this glacier is going to be particularly difficult. Maybe that's one that Grimsley would want to take, since he's always up for a challenge. So we'll have him wander toward the hot springs. As Copper goes ahead and swipes up a couple more of those leeches. He can call Rekois over here too. Though I guess she's going to have to plop down her nest right here, if we want to have her have her baby on this next turn. Sakechi, meanwhile, since he's so close to the end of his lifespan, and I know he's going to want to meet his first baby, maybe we'll have him take the more quiet route. We'll bring him out into the ocean so we can lead his mate up to the shores, where she can plant her nest down too. They'll make their way over to this closer glacier, and he can stand high and mighty atop the stump scouting around the area to make sure no dangers will come toward his baby. So who's going to go with who here? Who would be up for the big adventure in the leech territory? And who would prefer to take the more scenic route and go straight to the glacier in this episode? I think Kaneki is probably up for some glacier smashing. We'll bring him over here to scout around as well. Oh, he has some roots to dig up. And he can even call out for a mate of his own. Maybe he's looking to start a family too. May and Proxy will want to follow their children for sure. And Proxy, you even have some little shells that you can scoop up over here. I suppose we could have Pixel do the same, since he has that hammer tail. He could crack open those shells for his father and really impress him. That just leaves Fang and Copper. And since they're both such hardy individuals, I think it's quite clear that they would prefer to travel with Grimsley. So let's see if we can have one of them set up on the stump as well. That way they should be able to scout around for these babies. We want to make sure that nothing is going to stumble down from the peaks in particular, since that seems to be where most of the danger is often located. It's where we've seen our fair share of balance bears at least. So you'll have to be very, very vigilant as we skip our first day on this brand new mountain. Oh my goodness! Do we have two little saber-fanged babies? Oh, and they couldn't possibly be any more different. Let's take a look at our little mouse's baby first. Oh, he had some excellent luck. Honestly, his genes aren't that bad at all. Perfect eyesight, no deformed paws in sight, and he's even carrying that scorpion tail in his inactive traits. So there is a possibility that his family could see it again, but I love his looks. He's dark as night, and he looks like a baby to be feared. So the next name on my list is Chupi. Welcome to our tribe. Maybe you'll be the one to crack open the second glacier for us after we get you out of leech territory. And then we have our spiky little white knight. Oh my gosh, he looks so cool with the spikes on his back and the big megaloceros horns. He has a six in attack strength, which isn't too bad. 
so at least he should be able to protect his family quite easily. He's also very, very sneaky with those two velvet paws of his. So I wonder how that'll affect his future story. But as for you, the next name on my list is Simber. So welcome to our tribe as well. Now let's see if we can't get somebody over here to crack open that glacier for us. It's so close. I don't want to end this episode without getting to it first. So let's bring you guys out of the water. Thankfully, it's not quite cold enough yet that they have to... Oh my goodness. They have to worry about huddling together. But you guys have stumbled straight into the jackpot. This must be the Bandit Brothers stash. So we'll have to try to pick these up very, very quickly. Ooh, there's even plenty of little fish down here too. Somebody would love to scoop those up as well. Maybe it'll even be a little Kaneki. Oh no, was I wrong? Oh, maybe they are getting too cold. Oh, you poor thing. Let's have May settle down next to you, so you'll be nice and toasty warm. Yeah, Kaneki might not be one of her own kids, but she is still very dedicated to making sure that he's safe. She doesn't want to see the poor little thing suffer. We have enough nesting material for another baby too. So since this is Sakechi's final day, Maybe it would be a good idea for us to breed them one more time. We'll have Nevi settle down one more nest. And maybe Sakechi can sing one final song of farewell. Something for his babies to remember. Unfortunately, the island is still very, very quiet. So no wanderers were willing to join our tribe because of his song. But Kaneki is not going to give up so easily. He wants to find a mate of his very own too. Now, Grimsley still has a good deal of time left on his lifespan, so we don't have to worry about him having a baby so soon. We'll leave Rakois right next to the nest to watch after their new little one. And then perhaps Copper and Little Fang could try their best to scout around to see what else they can find. Ironically, it seems like most of the roots are on this side of the island, while all of our shells are over here. Ooh, I wonder if that's going to affect our glaciers as well. I wonder if this is going to be another digging trunk. And maybe another hammer tail. Oh gosh, I hope not. We have had our fair share of hammer tails on these islands so far. But I guess you have to consider what would be able to survive on these sources of food. If our spiky-bodied creatures are starting to freeze a little bit though, then I hope that these days are at least counting toward the heat body so we can start weaseling that onto their babies as well. Ooh, but it looks like this baby might just be hardy enough to go after those glaciers. And it's another female too, which we haven't seen born in our nest too recently. In fact, this is our very first female saber snow that has been born inside our very own nests. So far we've only seen males, so, you're kind of a throwback to our little sunflower from our previous mountain. And as for your name, you will be called Madison. So she has that long distance song from her father to remember him, despite the fact that all that's left are a pile of bones. Maybe even like all of our other tribe mates, she can use the remains of her father to show her dedication to our tribe's mission too. It is definitely grim but you can't deny that it would be quite the terrifying sight. Maybe they're just hoping it'll be a good way to scare away the balance bears. Now, who can go over to the glacier with little Pixel? I suppose May could always be the one. She does have a digging trunk after all, and we want our brand new friend to be greeted by a familiar face. Not to mention, it looks like there are a couple of roots that she can dig up here too. Though I am still absolutely amazed by how many of these shells that we found. I guess that means the nimble fingers weren't such a waste after all. Now come on up to the stump where your mate has passed. You can pick up all of those nests, so hopefully somebody else can use them in the future. Because you won't need to use them anymore for now. There's probably much better places for you to set up a little nursery anyways. Now how about a couple more calls from you, Kaneki? 
Ooh, you seem to be calling the bunnies down from the peaks. Well, I guess that's a good sign. At least that means that we won't need to wait for another heat wave before we can actually go hunting. Ooh, Grimsley. This might be a good way for you to show your little baby how to hunt. Since you were so successful with Rakois, let's have you lunge up the cliffs so you can grab this bunny from behind and bring it back to your baby on the next turn. Little Choopy is going to be very, very impressed. Maybe we can have him scoot his way into the hot springs as we pick up this nest too, so we can move his nursery closer to the glacier. And Fang, since you're already all the way out here, why don't we see if you can find any more of those leeches in the waves as well? Ah, oh, looks like the Bandit Brothers didn't leave you out either. Well, that's good. You'll have to let your brother Copper know, because he can come down here and pick up those shells too, before they get swept away by the currents. You'll just have to work together, because there is the possibility that one of those pesky leeches could find you instead. So, let's go ahead and skip the day again. Oh my gosh, talk about a throwback. The Krabbits are back too. The Krabbits actually used to be the friends of our founders, the very ones who started this mission. Oh, and it looks like winter is settling in upon the mountain as well. Hopefully that's a good omen. Usually we have a little bit more of a warning, but you might as well do the honors, Pixel. While your mother waits right behind the rocks, digging up roots too, so this new creature should have plenty to eat. Oh, well, you might as well grab the bunny. If they're going to hop right next to you, then you might as well pick up the meat as well. So hopefully whoever is in here will enjoy the taste of bunny meat. Oh, it's another Megaloceros horned baby. Oh my gosh, you look adorable. Well, you're going to fit in perfectly with our tribe. She's actually the same color as May. Ooh, she almost has the same name, too. Do I see the bird beak in her inactive traits? Oh my goodness, can you imagine? The bird beak on our ancient legends? I guess it isn't so out of place. There is the possibility that we could find the wings inside these glaciers now, too. Technically, they are considered to be something of an ancient gene. The developers have said that the winged creatures basically went extinct, or they were supposed to anyways, but sometimes you can still find them inside these glaciers, as if they were around in the same ancient times as the Megaloceros horns and the digging trunks. I don't think I'm going to count them in this challenge, just because they weren't part of the mountain update, but at the same time I won't fight the wings if we do manage to find them because I think that could definitely help us out when it comes to finding food. And when it comes to keeping our babies safe too, they could help us out just by scouting around for potential dangers, and by letting our tribe know if they see any of those pesky balance bears off in the distance. But let's go ahead and bring little Messy a bit closer, since she is likely to get quite cold. She doesn't have the big body like our hardiest of creatures so she's going to have to adapt quite quickly. I wonder if she and Pixel could even start a family together. Their immunity genes do line up quite well. And who wouldn't be smitten by those gorgeous rosy horns? So we'll have them scoot on over here to pick up some extra shells for her on the next turn. And hopefully he can find a way to impress her. Because the falling snow means it's the perfect time to settle down and start a family. So in the next episode, We'll see if maybe we can find a little bit more luck in the other glacier. The one in slightly more dangerous territory, where all of the leeches were gathered. Hopefully Grimsley was right to lead his family in this direction. Maybe they'll even find a brand new saber-fanged individual to really lead their family to greatness. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!